Today on the Rumors Comedy Cast, Ben Walker talks to a man who's a lot of life most of us can only dream of. The most well-dressed homeless man you'll ever meet, comedian Tom Rhodes. Follow us on Twitter, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, at Rumors Comedy. Welcome to Rumors Comedy Club Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Walker. Uh, it's 25th edition, 25 years of podcasting. We got the very funny Tom Rhodes, first show, just ended. How you doing, Tom? Great, Ben. Nice to meet you Great. tonight. Uh, we met earlier when you drove tonight. me here, but it's great to meet you it's more again. More formal setting <laughs> and, uh, for the cameras. Yeah, uh, it was great, man. Uh, Rumors is a classic comedy club. I mean, it's 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 the stage is great, the intimacy is great, low ceiling, dark. Uh, the laughs really explode. Um, you know, I did over an hour, yeah, and uh, I absolutely uh, adored the audience here. Yeah, fantastic, nice yeah. and that, like I said on stage. Um, you know, I was doing some jokes about Hindu. Um, the, my wife is Hindu. And in the States, even in like a big city, that joke would mm-hmm. get nothing. But in Canada, the great thing about Canada is even like, you know, even your rednecks kind of yeah. know some shit. That was very good. Even you know, the rednecks laugh it's at really true. Like, like really your good, average yeah. Canadian yeah. Uh, has a grasp of a lot of uh, pertinent mm-hmm. information. So that's that's really the great thing about performing in Canada. Yeah, like you're literally a world traveling comedian. So when you bring that up, like, like where are you based out of now? Like you are a world traveler. You've hosted travel shows, worked in Europe. <clears throat> like where are you now? Um, I don't live anywhere. Uh, when people ask me where I live, I always say these shoes. <laughs> I've had everything in storage for nine years, and uh, I spend six months of the year um, outside of North America, um, and then six months playing all over. The U.S. and Canada. Okay. I did five months in Europe last year, a month in Asia. So where's your, where's your stuff? Like, where are you? Where I've are had you? everything in storage for nine and a half years in Los Angeles. Okay. So that was the last place I lived. Place. So you hosted a you hosted a Dutch uh, a Dutch talk show. You were the David Letterman of Amsterdam. How did you get that? How did like how did you how did you get that? Um. <clears throat> There's a um, there's a, a a great comedy club in Amsterdam called Tumler, mm-hmm. and that's who first brought me to Amsterdam. I ended up falling in love with a girl that worked there, right. and I was with this girl for two years, and then I really started focusing on London. Mm-hmm. And there's all these worldwide comedy circuits booked out of London, and that's really how I broke into the worldwide circuit was getting in with London and. Um, So I was with this girl for two years living. I'd moved to Amsterdam and was really focusing on Europe and, you know, doing gigs outside of North America. And then the relationship ended and I was just about to move back to the United States when uh, it it was just fortuitous timing. I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, These people from this Dutch television network were looking for uh, an American to host an American style late night talk show. And I got the job. And how long did you do that for? I did that for uh, two years, and then the same network let me be a presenter on a travel program for one year. Oh, cool. So I was on Dutch television for three years. What's, uh, like, I don't even mention the Canadian, like, audience, American audience, now you're the Dutch audience. Like, what's the, like, how do you adapt your material? Like, is there, is there, is there much adapting, or you just kind of switch a few things, like local references, or you have to completely change your act for, like, you know, Dutch compared to... Well, that, for me, that's the exciting thing because I, yeah. I, I do all these different countries and um, everywhere, for me, there, that's the adrenaline rush, uh, being on stage in a different country and then finding out uh, kind of on the spot what works and what doesn't mm-hmm. and then, you know, modifying on the spot. You know, you're, you're going to lose some jokes, right, references that don't right. work, but normally what you gain and observations about the country yeah. you know like tonight i did you know a bunch of um my you know stuff on canada right like the you know united states and we, we had this up, yeah. i was in april i was here in april yeah. did vancouver edmonton calgary and when i left the united states it was big on the news that um this cop white cop shot right. an unarmed black man and i come to canada and you're such a happy country <laughs> You're, uh, you're on your news. Canada had just declared war on raccoons. You guys were tired pretty, of... Pretty big nuisance. Like, yeah. It's pretty... But uh, it's still a black and white issue, Ben. That's true. <laughs> yeah. 
Hit the issues hard of the 25th anniversary of the podcast, you guys. Uh, You're a natural. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I yeah. think you might make it to we're episode gonna be, 50. Yeah, we're going to be serious. Gonna have, what's the craziest place? Uh, like, What's the craziest show you've done? The craziest place you've been? <clears throat> well, I just did a show in Phuket, Thailand. Right. Uh, for the month of May, I, w- I did a month in Asia. And the last night was a gig in Phuket, Thailand. And it was uh, outdoors in a parking lot. And uh, as horrendous as that sounds, it was one of the coolest gigs I've ever done. It's like all expats there, or do you have a lot of expats? Like but it was like it wasn't. Like... Um, <clears throat> there's a really touristy area right. of Phuket, which I didn't see. I was kind of on the north part of the island where mm-hmm. um, a lot of people live. So there's a lot of expatriates, and then people uh, who have married um, Thai people and had children. So and, and just a lot of spliced ethnicities. Um, uh, and, and, and then people from all over the world. And so they lived there uh, in the surrounding areas. And it was like a little village had done a, uh, like a, uh, it was like a little village celebration. There was like a stage with like potted plants around the edges. They had some local uh, high school band open. Starring four uh, Tom Rose. Yeah, and then, and then a Canadian guy um, from Vancouver went on. Uh, a guy who lives out there. Uh, can't remember his name. And uh, <laughs> sorry, if you ever see this. Yes. And um, it was these Indian people. They had moved there from India, and the guy had been a concert promoter. So it was the first comedy event they had put on. So they really wanted it to be a success. Mm-hmm. So the guy was like, "Oh my god!" The 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 local newspaper covered it. Uh, they came and filmed it uh, for the local television. Oh, cool! And it was like an event. And, and it was really hot. It was like in the 90s. And How much uh, is that Celsius? Got a lot of Canadian viewers. Yeah, what, 90s, is, what is that? 35, maybe? 34? Okay, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. So I did like an hour and yeah. I'm sweating. It was like, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was really cool. They were, I mean, they were a phenomenal audience. Yeah. And then like, you know. How uh, many people were there? And then, huh? like, and then like, you know, people from all over the world, I normally have a joke or a story about mm. most countries. So um, I, my favorite kind of audience is multi-ethnic and multinational. So, um, and you know, and, that, and that's why I like playing in Canada because, yeah. you know, there's normally people from all over Even the world. Even redneck towns you'll get, you know. It's right. Like, yeah. You know, there'll be someone from. I was saying Winnipeg's redneck. It's the Paris of the Prairies. Gone. No, there was a guy from Buenos Aires here yeah. and a girl from uh, Guyana and, um, you know, and then yeah. a, a, a French woman from Paris. I mean. Named in, Linda. In Winnipeg, yeah. You know? Linda from Paris. She wasn't from Paris. She was a liar. I'll tell you an interesting story about Winnipeg. The last time I was here was 15 years ago, and it shows you how uh, you should always be nice to people. There was a guy <laughs> who was a local comedian in Winnipeg, and he had done a set while I was here, and, and I was nice to him, and I hung out with him, and a uh, really sweet, wonderful guy. And now uh, he runs the comedy scene in Korea, in Seoul, Korea. Yeah, uh, Jeff, Jeff Sinclair. Jeff Sinclair, you know yeah, Jeff? buddy yeah. of mine. Yeah, big guy. He's huge. Love him. Yeah, what a, one guy. of the most yeah. nicest guys I've ever met in yeah. my life. So, um, you know, when they started doing that comedy scene, mm-hmm. I've been over there and done it twice. Yeah, and some big names over there too, right? Like, they get over Matt, yourself. me, yeah. Kyle, Kyle Kinane. Kinane. Yeah. Um, uh, I forget who else, but lots of lots of big names. Yeah. And he comes home once or you're here in the... One know, of my favorite human beings town. on the planet. Yeah. And I met him here in at Rumors. Yeah. So I, MC, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's really yeah. cool that, you know, I got to do this great uh, tour of Korea. And it all happened because now of Winnipeg. The show in Korea, is that all expats or do you have Korean uh, nationals? Yeah. and then, Well, yeah. it's like when I go to China, you know, uh, friends of mine, how is it possible you play in China? Yeah. You know, you forget a lot of these people uh, were educated in, yeah. um, in, in Canada, the U.S., Australia, England, Ireland. I mean, we really won... The lottery when it comes mm-hmm. to the language, because you know, yeah, language is the international language of business. Yeah, we showed the university here, and then we had uh, a student from Rwanda and from Mauritius, from where? Rwanda. Yeah, and another girl from Mauritius, and they just like back home. They're like, we love watching YouTube stand up comedy, like Jen Kirkman, you know, whoever else. Like, oh man, that's crazy. It reaches so far, right? As you think, yeah, it's massive. All, and you know, um, all over Asia, Russell Peters really yeah, kind of. Exactly. Um, put comedy on the map yeah. for a lot of Asian comedians. That's like they they were introduced mm-hmm. to the um the the art form for lack of a better 
So would you ever want to come back? Settle down stateside? Or are you are you still? I am about to move being... to Los Angeles. I'm going to change yeah. my whole game plan. So I've been married for four years. Right. My wife is from Holland, and she's a photographer. She travels with me, mm-hmm. and um, we're uh, it's life has been great. Um, not living anywhere. The last four years in a row, when we've had time off, we've she gone. Was cool, she was cool with that. Like whose idea was? Yeah, it? you guys are both like, hey. <clears throat> yeah, no. I mean, I I've had we've been together for seven years. Right. So she just rolled with it. Nice. And I always thought, why had all these relationships end? Because I was always traveling. And I always thought, you know, why can't I find a woman that likes to travel, sleep late, and laugh a lot? So I finally found her. And she's a photographer. So, you know, I'm looking for jokes all over the world. And she's looking for photos. What kind of but, um, you know, uh, we've been doing this for a while. Yeah. and wanna, oh, That's cool. Where's she now? She's not in Winnipeg. Uh, she's actually in Holland right now, visiting okay. her mother, because we're about to make this big move. At the end of the month, we're gonna. Oh dang! Right away. Well, it's been nine, it's and, a half nine and a half years. If, if that's right away, <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, it sounds so fun. Like I don't know. Like it's. Uh... Yeah, we've had the dream yeah. uh, life, but it's like um, uh, we we, we want to see how big our refrigerator magnet collection is. <laughs> so it's time to assess it. What's the, yeah, like you, you were hilarious then. Like, what's the, like, when you go overseas, for example, like, what's the, was there a country that was, like, just completely like, super difficult, or was there a show where it was just, it just wasn't hitting because of, like, a language barrier, if there weren't, you know, maybe, uh, like, in China, for example, did you always have lots of expats at the shows, or sometimes was it? No, but uh, like that, like, China, you know, you got people from all over the world. I mean, like, like Hong Kong is mostly people in the banking yeah. industry. You go to Beijing, it's people who are, working in government related thing, people from the embassies, yeah. uh, people that work for things that are related to the Chinese government. And then Shanghai is my favorite city in Asia. Um, you, you meet like people doing really creative things there, like right. Swiss filmmakers, French journalists, uh, Japanese animation people. It's like, I, I love going to Shanghai because like th- there's people there doing like the most interesting, inventive, creative, things you could imagine mm-hmm. it's it, it's um you know I, I i think you know they're they're creating the future over there so on top of all these expatriates you know you could have germans french italian yeah. canadian american all this stuff you've got chinese people that were either educated in um western countries or um they they grew up you know you'll meet chinese canadian people chinese american uh Chinese Australian from England, you know, and they've, they've, you know, got family or roots yeah. and and gone back. So it's, um, yeah, it's so cool. It, man. It's, yeah, it's, like, it's 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 multi layered. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool! Like your, just uh, <clears throat> your your journey, I guess. You know, with you and your wife, like, it's really cool. You guys both no, you know, no roots. Finally, sent down in L.A. Like, what do you have coming up when you go back? Uh, I guess when you move back. Like, what do you have coming up in the next little bit? Uh, not a single thing. Not a single thing. Uh, I mean, you know, I have yeah. pretty much ignored Los Angeles for the last 10 years. I mean, I've gone there. Uh, I always look at Los Angeles as the home office. You know, you got to go there and show them your receipts uh, <laughs> a couple times a year. Show them what you've been working on. <laughs> but so f- for a guy who hasn't concentrated on mm-hmm. it, it's like good things always happen for me when I go right. to L.A. I've done At Midnight three times in the That's last right. year. Um Four months ago, I did a acting part on comedy Bang Bang. Uh, you know, I'll, I, I I go on Joe Rogan's podcast a lot. Uh, you know, I've been on Mark Maron's podcast. Um, I did. You know, I I, uh, I have friends that have television shows that are really good friends of mine that have never asked me to be on their television show. So you I worked for... with, I was at the comedy store and I worked with, uh, Steve Byrne was there and I know Steve Byrne, I'm, you know, he's a friend, but we're not like tight like I am with like some other people. And he, Steve Byrne is a great guy. This, this was a year ago. I was in LA and he was like, oh, Rhodes, when, when are you leaving town? And I was like, um, Wednesday. And he's great. We film our show on Tuesday. There's a part. it will be perfect for you. He didn't say, you know. Um, can you audition for it? He goes, he goes wait, wait. He, we're standing right there. He pulls out his phone. He goes, hey, is that, uh, the, that part still open of, you know, uh, the, the character was good-looking guy. <laughs> is that part, is that, that part of good-looking guy? They're still looking for, 
is that still open? Okay, great. I got Tom Rhodes. I want him to do it. So he goes, okay, great. So we rehearse on Monday. We film it on Tuesday. And, um, and boom, it, I got to do, I mean, and like, I've already gotten like um, four checks from that. And I just, I had two words I spoke. <laughs> uh, and if two words pay as nicely as those four checks I've gotten, yeah. I could only imagine what... <laughs> Uh, regular people do, and it just goes to show you. It just goes to show you the magic of Hollywood, and what they can do with makeup and special effects. That I could be the good-looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta wrap this up. What? Uh, where can we reach you? Uh, TomRhodes.net is my um, website. My podcast. Uh, I'm very proud of. I've talked to comedians uh, and people all over the world, uh, but not just comedians. I did Steve Wozniak. Uh, my next guest is Gilbert King, who won the Pulitzer Prize. Steve to, Wozniak, who's that? He was the co-founder of Apple. Yes. Uh, Steve Jobs was the marketing guy. It was Wozniak was the inventor. He came to my show in I'm December. A trog, I'm a troglodyte. Uh. Yeah, you're not going to look good for not knowing that. Uh, he came to my show in Lake Tahoe in December, <laughs> and he's a great guy. And I was in San Francisco in January, and I said, hey, man, would you do my podcast? And he's all about, you know, creative individual ventures and people mm -hmm. trying to do you know their own thing uh so he did it that was great i was in new zealand two years ago doing the new zealand comedy festival and i got to interview kim.com who started mega upload.com he's on the fbi most wanted list Dang. he can't leave new zealand very hard very difficult um interview to get but um you know i i did a radio interview for the comedy festival in Auckland, and they said, what's the one thing you want to do in New Zealand? And I said, I know it sounds silly, but I'd like to interview Kim.com for my podcast. Uh, somebody was listening. He followed me an hour later on Twitter. I followed him back, and then we started direct messaging. And um, uh, the next thing you know, I'm at his mansion. Dang. And so I've done some great people. I've, you know, great comedians, Brian Regan, Jim Gaffigan, uh, Russell Peters, Doug Stanhope. Oh, nice. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had, uh, you know, it's a great thing about comedy. It's really a small business. Mm -hmm. I mean, a small world, you know, so. And there's always stuff to talk about. There's always. Uh... Yeah. Um, and then uh, next week, and I did Ron White. That's going up after okay. the Gil King. So. What, uh, so we got, to, what's your Twitter handle? At <laughs> underscore Tom Rhodes. And I've been criticized for having underscore in my Twitter <laughs> handle. And uh, my reaction is, I don't want anyone to follow me who can't find the underscore <laughs> on a keyboard. Uh, yeah, and my, I got a YouTube channel where I've made tons of um, travel videos, comedy videos. And uh, I'm, I'm doing these new things, knowledge nuggets. Um, um, it's uh, YouTube.com forward slash... King of Haha. Ha. It's my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. But more importantly, um, you know, I'm, I'm the king of free content. So enjoy my free podcast and my free videos. And um, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on to the 25th anniversary show. Uh, Tom is here until Saturday. July 12th. Uh, follow Rupert's podcast at, uh, I, you know, you can get it on iTunes. But this is a podcast. People will listen to it any time. Yeah, so, it. like, somebody's going to hear this like a year you'll from see, now. You'll see it on Facebook. You'll say uh, July, and they're looking at it. Well, yeah. He's not there in July. July 2015. Oh, that was like a year ago. Just look for the 25th anniversary special podcast. Uh, <laughs> like us on Instagram, rumors underscore comedy. We followed your lead. You can't do the underscore. If you can't do the underscore, don't even bother. You're right. Don't even come here. Anyway, uh, that's been Tom Rose. He's here till Saturday. Uh, thank you very much. Shalom, amigos.